Het ministerie van Buitenlandse Zaken, International Business en Internationale Samenwerking heeft op vrijdag 4 december 2020 een Zoom-meeting gehouden. Aan deze meeting hebben van regeringszijde onder meer president Chandrika Persat Santoki en ministers Ramdin en Achai Bersing van Financiën en Planning geparticipeerd. Ook andere relevante actoren waren aanwezig. Het thema van de meeting was Sovereign Wealth and Fund Management and Lessons Learned in Other Countries. The title of today's presentation is Sovereign Wealth and Fund Management and Lessons Learned in Other Countries. A most appropriate topic at this moment in time for our country, Suriname has been blessed with natural resources. And all indications are there that we may expect enormous revenues from oil and gas. A big challenge for a small economy like ours. It, that, it is therefore crucial for us to learn from others who went through this experience of sudden influx of huge revenues and how to manage them. We do not need to reinvent the wheel. Let's apply good practices and avoid known pitfalls. In this regard, Norway's experience and lesson learned in the past 50 years would be highly relevant and beneficial for public sector and entities in Suriname. With the establish establishment of the Norway, excuse me, the, with the establishment of the Sovereign Wealth Fund and the fiscal rules over its spending, Norway has successfully established a sound long-term revenue management policy. Norway has proved that developing the needed institutes and adhering the good governance practices results in an undeniable difference compared to other countries that have not done so. The key pillars of your fund are also our desire. Firstly, stability for a government budget, especially due to volatile commodity prices. Second, prevent overheating of the economy by dosing income into economy. Safeguarding longevity of oil wealth for the economy and with that safeguarding well-being for future generations. Today we have in our midst, we have representatives from different sectors in society. We have members of parliament. We have representatives from non-governmental institutions. We do have representatives from the private sector especially from the oil and gas industry as well. The CEO of State Oil Company, Mr. Rudolf Elias. Um, we have representatives from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, ministers, the Minister of Finance, Mr. Chaibar Singh, and uh, other representatives from throughout the society. And that is exactly the intention we had, to have a wide range of representatives from different segments of society because we want to discuss something in Suriname starting today and ongoing towards the future um, whereby we will need all the voices in society to be heard before we decide on how we manage wealth in future. So this is one of the reasons why we have this broad segment uh, together. Um, I believe for a long time we have been discussing starting the discussion among ourselves, but while we embark on that route, I think it's useful to have some exchange on experiences which other countries have had with wealth management, especially towards the future, and how the future generations can, can, can benefit from it. The bilateral relations between uh, Suriname and Norway is based on trade. Um, we have a proud history of trading both sides uh, for three other uh, raw materials. Uh, these days, the Norwegian uh, oil company Equinor is active um, in searching for oil in Suriname, which we blocks, as you all of you know. And the Norwegian petroleum service industry has shown considerable interest 
in Suriname now that we have found uh, oil. There was a delegation uh, in January. I'm sure when we uh, are uh, when we have handled uh, the pandemic that there will be a renewed interest uh, to uh, kickstart new new uh, economic uh, opportunities and collaboration between Norway and Sudan. But I want to mention to you that when uh, our dear friend and honorary consul, Marcel uh, May, received me uh, some years ago in Suriname, he showed me a statue of a man called Uttu Tam. Um, and he was part of a major shift in Surinamese history when he made a small, but as I can understand, uh, an important contribution for abolishing slavery in Suriname. So, in addition to talk about uh, how we succeeded First of all, we'll talk, we will talk a little bit about how, what we failed and how we did mistakes. Mm -hmm. But we will also talk a little bit and ask some questions about what comes first. And we will share a little bit of our impressions of what are the prerequisites in order to have success in these fields. How can you uh, become a successful oil nation and take care of <clears throat> the values that you create for yourself and for future generations. And there are some issues that we that we done will talk more about, but it is important to to have in mind uh, Norway, first of all, the welfare state in Norway is not based on petroleum. It helped us a lot, but all the principles of the welfare state in Norway was made and decided and entered into law before we found oil. And at that point, Norway was one of the poorest countries in Europe. And those decisions were made, and those were part of the basis for which we were able to achieve a successful management of the oil resources when they came. Um, we also had strong public institutions in place. So to make sure that you have that basis is extremely important. Um, we had an active civil society with workers' union, and loads of public discussion, and also a lot of public protest. And that was important as well, in order to allow the nation to agree and to have the possibility to, uh, to actively participate in the debate, so that it became a national task and not uh, just a government task. Norwegian society is built on trust. And that has been essential for the management of the petroleum sector and the income that we have uh, derived from the petroleum sector. Our welfare state and public benefits were established uh, long before we found oil, as I said. So, um, the, and with that also came transparency. So, you have already done one extremely important part, and that was to invite very broadly today so that everyone will be part of the discussions. We can only encourage you to be as transparent as possible with all the steps that you're going to take from this day on, because that's the only way that you can ensure that you have the support uh, also, the next government, and the next government after that, um, we wish you the, the best of luck in that uh, endeavor. <laughs>